Hello, it's the Feast of the Epiphany, the 6th of January. And I want to read uh, the Gospel story that gives us the Epiphany from Matthew chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd, be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found from them the exact time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Jerusalem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of frankincense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Lord God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, reveal the Christ child to us, that we might have faith in him and grow in your ways. Open our hearts to your word and your word to our hearts. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, familiar enough uh, story, isn't it, about these uh, people coming from the east. Uh, we're all so taken with the idea that there were three of them that we never consider that the Bible doesn't actually say there were three of them. It just says there were three uh, gifts. I think there were three of them. Uh, and I'm not going to strain at that, at that map. There could have been more. Uh, there were some people, some men, magi, uh, who came. Variously, they've been called kings. Depends on the translation. Some translations get this wrong, call them kings. Uh, and sometimes wise men. Well, wise men is an interpretation of the idea of magi. Uh, wise men, thinkers, um, seers and prophets, uh, philosophers, studiers, uh, perhaps some form of geomancy going on, perhaps uh, some form uh, of... Um, astrology going on in their lives um, but they come from the east so we'll deal with that first what's to the east directly to the east of Jerusalem and Bethlehem and remember Jerusalem and Bethlehem are very close to each other geographically directly to the east you go across the hill country and the wilderness to the river Jordan beyond that you're into the modern state of Jordan uh, and uh, beyond that you're into the great deserts of uh, Arabia, nowadays known as Saudi Arabia. Uh, beyond that, uh, <coughs> pardon me, you get it all here, don't you? You get sneezes and coughs and all sorts of erectations. Uh, so uh, you, you move on out to the east, yeah, you come to uh, Iraq uh, in modern terms, uh, you come to Iran, once Persia. On out beyond that, through Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India, that's if you go southish. Beyond that, across Burma and down into Thailand and Singapore, Indonesia, uh, you know, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, China, Korea, Japan, Pacific Ocean. North of China, of course, you have Mongolia, and then you have 
places like uh, uh, Siberia, down in the, among all that, you have uh, the great swathe of, um, you know, Nepal, Bhutan, all those nations out there. I'm making a point here. I'm not just sitting here rambling. I'm a wee bit, but I'm not sitting here rambling. Okay, so you've all that out there. Now, there are well-worn routes, R-O-O, no, R-O-U-T-E-S, routes, or as the Americans say, routes, okay? The old trade routes, the silk and spice routes uh, across the East. So there are hundreds of thousands of people bringing trade and commerce in and out of this vast area of the world called the East. We don't know where they came from. Out to the east. They might have come from Jordan and it taken them a couple of days to get there. The Bible doesn't say. So we, we've got all sorts of poems and songs and hymns and literature and fables and so on. It says they came from way, way out there. Maybe they just came from around the corner. It was east. Okay. Maybe they came from Persia, maybe they came from China. We don't know, we just are given the bare bones they came from the East. The East implies certain things. Jesus is born into the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire is heavily infiltrated by thought forms that come from different sources. Thought forms, cultures and practices. The part of the, the empire that Jesus lives in is a crossroads between Africa, Asia and Europe in the Levant. And in the Levant is this great mixture, the dominant thought forms and practices, the dominant cultural way of being for a long, long time is uh, the Greek mindset. But there would have been African influence as well. And then off to the east, you have... Huge philosophical groups. You've got philosophers, religions, practices that go back millennia. Millennia. You've already had in China by this stage, people like Confucius have been and gone. Long time, centuries before. Uh, in India, you've had the Buddha has come and gone. We've not yet had Muhammad with Islam. Islam is still 600 years uh, into the future, so no Islam in the world. But you have ancient religions, some of which still exist. For example, uh, a very powerful religion uh, in the ancient Near East and across into Western Asia, the area that we're sort of thinking about is a, a religion called Zoroastrianism. You've maybe never heard of Zoroastrianism, but uh, it's mainly still practiced by people called the Farsis. And probably the most famous Persian Farsi Zoroastrian that you will ever have heard of was Freddie Mercury. That was his background. Okay, so it's still around. Zoroastrianism still exists. Uh, I think it was Joanna Lumley. Sorry. Dame Joanna Lumley did a series uh, a couple of years ago uh, about going along the spice routes into Asia and she went to the centre of Zoroastrianism. It still exists. Looks a very strange religion to us, but it was a religion that was practised in those ancient empires that were off to the east. And it had a belief in one single god. Uh, but it had a lot of mysticism esoteric practice, um, lots of um, astrology and, and things that uh, look a bit odd or strange to us. And it was right through the Babylonian Empire, it was right through the Assyrian Empire, Persian Empire, been around for a long time. The Greek ideas, the Chinese ideas, all these things are mixing through each other. These are learned, thoughtful people. What Brings them to Jesus. Sir, 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 a star. What brings them to Jesus is the same phenomenon 
that brings you and me to Jesus. When our minds are turned towards God, we may have been looking at some thought forms, poetry, songs, hymns, scripture, a philosopher, something. But what brings us to Jesus is always the same. It's God the Holy Spirit. The means by which he drew them was that the Spirit of God has drawn their attention to a star. Was this a special star, a one-off star, was it any old star? But it was a star that is illuminated in their understanding and in their hearts by the working of the Holy Spirit. What brought the wise men to uh, Jerusalem and on to Bethlehem is God the Holy Spirit. It's always God the Holy Spirit. Jump forward 30 years into the ministry of Jesus. There's a man called Bartimaeus who's blind from birth and he's sitting at the side of the road and he hears a crowd. He hears great excitement and he hears that it's Jesus. And he jumps up and he shouts, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus heals Bartimaeus. And we still call him blind Bartimaeus 2,000 years later. Unblind Bartimaeus might be more appropriate. Yeah, he heard a crowd. Yes, he heard the name Jesus. But what inspired him to leap up and cry out for help? It's God the Holy Spirit. What brought me to be ordained into the ministry? It's God the Holy Spirit. What draws people to faith in Jesus Christ? It's God the Holy Spirit. What inspires these guys? Maybe there were 150 of them sitting around in a Zoroastrian temple somewhere or other. You know, in uh, Samarkand, somewhere out in the east. And they're all sitting around and they're looking at their charts and they're rolling out their scrolls and they're talking and they're reflecting and they're thinking. I said, oh, look, there's a strange looking star over there. And maybe there was 150 of them in some great school of, of speculation and conversation. And three of them, let's say there were three, get up and go. Why? What made them get up and go? Voice of God. The Spirit of God. The nudge of God. The touch of God on their lives. That's what moves everybody to God. And even on the mornings when you... You know, roll back your duvet and look outside and you see it's snowing and you think, I'm not going to church. And an hour later you find yourself in church. Part of what will have got you there is that it's the customary place for you to be. Part of what will have got you there is the handsome bearded rector. Part of what will have got you there might have been Chris Broddle or Jill Hunter or somebody else. Part of what will have got you there will be you like to sing. Part of what you will have got you there is you're dead nosy to see what's happened next. Part of what part of what what gets us into church, what draws us into the sphere of God's influence is God Himself, God the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is active throughout the whole Nativity story. God the Holy Spirit has given to the prophets the prophecies. God the Holy Spirit has brought into being two people who will be obedient to his call, Mary and Joseph. The angels appear as messengers of God to the shepherds. But they could have said, wow, what was that all about? I have to stay off the wine. But they didn't. They got up and they went. These guys have been pondering, looking, reflecting, maybe searching the Hebrew scriptures. Did they have the Hebrew scriptures? We don't know. We don't know. If they lived in the Persian Empire, there would have been Jews there. Maybe they knew some. We don't know who they were. We don't even have their names. Those names came out later on. Either made up or not made up. It doesn't really matter. 
doesn't matter. We don't know. They're not named in the scripture, but they got up and they went looking for Jesus. And if we come looking for Jesus, it's the Spirit of God draws us. And they almost get there. And that's a common enough experience when we seek Christ in the world. We get into an approximation of where we're meant to be. And so they arrive in Jerusalem. Why wouldn't they? It's the centre of the, the, the government there. It's the centre of the religious practice. It's where the Jews do Judaism. It's famous. Let's go and see Jerusalem, you know. And off they go. They arrive in Jerusalem. And they end up in front of Herod. And Herod doesn't know the story. There are a couple of reasons why Herod might not have known the story. We think everybody walking around in the Bible knew everything. They didn't. He didn't know the story. One reason is he's not Jewish by background. He's Idumean. He will have come across Jewish thought. It's a predominant thought form in the area. And he will be aware of it, knows it, knows who the Jews are and they do Jewish stuff as far as he's concerned. Also too, he may have been in proximity to a lot of Jewish practice and thought, but he didn't know. And we live in a society today that uh, knows that we're here as Christians, knows sort of what we are, but doesn't really know. And when people ask you questions, sometimes you're in a state of wonder and bewilderment about how they know so little. And he didn't know what was going on. So he asked. He got the, the, the wise thinkers, the people who knew the prophecies. And he brought them in. And he sends the Magi on their way again. And there's a real sinister conversation. And he calls them secretly. And says to them, when you find this one, you find the child, come back and tell me where he is. So that I too may go and worship him. There's a chilliness in that, isn't there? And particularly since we know about the slaughter of the innocents which happens in the same chapter, you know, there's a chill runs through you. You know, come and tell me and I will. You know, he's kind of like, a bit like the child catcher in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang or that awful Nazi officer uh, in that glorious movie that was made by um, Tarantino. That He's kind of a bit of an Adolf Eichmann sort of a character. He's a horrible guy, sort of a sinister conversation. Come and tell me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way. And the star continues to guide them. Whatever that means. And people say, oh, there couldn't have been a star. Yeah, if God wanted it to be a star, they saw a star. But it's the eyes that they see with other people would have seen the star. Or whatever heavenly being it is but think too of the children of Israel being led by through the desert by a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day you know whatever that actually is they see with the eyes of their spirit which is pushed along by God's spirit at work within them it's God that's drawing these guys in and they come in and they kneel down and they worship Jesus. They bow down and worship him. A word about context here. We understand the worship of Jesus, but in the context of the society in which this is all happening, this is very alien to worship a baby, to worship the child. You know, we sing worship we the Godhead. Lovely, lovely. Uh, sentiment in, in the hymn you know yeah we do we worship him as the Godhead did they walk in with all the scriptural knowledge and insight no they're saying into God's 
being in the flesh without necessarily having to know and understand that. It's the same with faith. We move into our place in faith without having everything sorted out. Very few people you know, sit down with the Bible and read it from cover to cover and then say, I've got it, I've understood it, I'm going to believe in Jesus. Now there might be people like that. But most of us, it's something else. It's something emotive, it's something deep inside our psyche, it's a, it's a cocktail of things, it's an amalgamation of emotion, intellect, inclination, spiritual warfare and battling against the idea of being a person of faith or wanting to be a person of faith. There'll be all sorts of backwards and forwards. Mary, for example, was chosen because she was clearly a devout and holy person. You know, why are Peter, James and John chosen? And why do they so readily get up and follow after Jesus? Well, they follow after him not only because he speaks the voice, but the Spirit of God also moves within them and their natural inclinations are overwhelmed by the desire to go forward with Jesus and go on with him. And there's much more than just what we can work out with our brain. And that's very reassuring because I love Winnie the Pooh. I never really took to the cartoon because I grew up with a lovely Winnie the Pooh book that my mummy and daddy bought me for Christmas one year. I loved it. My mum used to read me the Winnie the Pooh stories and then when I was old enough I'd read them myself. Occasionally I still open the book and have a quick read through a page or two of Winnie the Pooh. And Winnie is described, Winnie the Pooh is described very accurately as a bear of very little brain. And which of us are bears of great brain. Bear of very little brain. We had um, a professor at university, Professor Jimmy Hare. He was a retired principal, I think, certainly a retired Presbyterian um, lecturer at uh, Union Theological College in Belfast. Very fine Christian man. And he was talking about the great theologian Karl Barth and he said of Karl Barth, Karl Barth could think thoughts that you and I can't think. Well, I have to tell you that Jimmy Hare could think thoughts that none of us in his class could think. He was a lovely man, man of God and oh, deep, deeply learned man. You don't have to be a bear of great brain to be a person of faith. Neither do you have to be thick. Just be yourself. Operate within the parameters that God has given you and given me. And, and you know, I'm not a bear of great brain. But I have an understanding. Now, we want to grow in our understanding. If we come to faith and we're saying, you know, Lord, I don't understand very much of this, but I'm going to trust in you anyway. That's grand. Ten years later, I want to know that we have become more articulate within our heart and our mind about what it is we believe. Who it is we believe. But we'll never become more than just flesh and blood. So when they walk in and they see this baby in a feeding trough and they bow down and worship him, that's a significant thing. They are moved to worship the child. That's extraordinary. They've come past the temple where the Holy of Holies is. They have left Jerusalem and gone down to the city of David. They've gone into where Jesus is being sheltered and they bow down and they worship him. How do they know it's him? Well, the star has come to rest over the place. But anybody could be seeing that star. They see it with the eyes of faith and belief. They see Jesus with the eyes of faith and belief and they worship him. They give to him the glory that is due unto God. They see what they cannot necessarily articulate. And that is faith. When we see what we cannot articulate but we respond in worship, that is faith. 
And so often we have been drilled in the last 500 years to be people of explanation. Of course we must be able to explain our faith, but we, there have to be those times when we're just moving into an encounter with God, as these guys are. God speaks to them in a dream and sends them home another way, and so foiled Herod's plan. It's a moment for us to reflect upon. It is generally understood that these three or whatever number, these people, we'll call them the three wise men, these magi from the east, are known Jews. Could have been Jews because it doesn't say they weren't, but it's largely accepted, I mean, largely accepted that they were not Jews. They were from some other place, some other ethnicity and some other way of spiritual walking. But in their spiritual walk there was sufficient openness in their thinking for God the Holy Spirit to draw them in. And all their learning and wisdom couldn't tell them exactly what they needed to know. But the Spirit of God brings them to the place of worship. And it's called the epiphany because epiphany means, you know, our eyes are open. Epiphany roughly means the same as revelation. They say, sometimes we say, we've had an epiphany. We have understood, we have seen. And they have understood and seen the Christ child. And that in itself is immensely important. What we draw down on as well as all that to reflect upon is this thought. That as Gentiles, as those outside of Judaism, they are included, they are drawn, and they are the first people that we really see worshipping at the feet of Jesus. And they are not rebuked, they are brought there by the Spirit and they worship Jesus. They represent the world beyond Judaism. And the world beyond Judaism is deeply significant for you and for me. Because you may have dropped in from somewhere in the world and you may be uh, a Jewish person. Uh, but the majority of people who will be watching this and indeed people for whom I make these videos are not. Church of Ireland were well, from whatever background. Some are Huguenots, some are Normans, some are Huguenots who married Normans, some are Ulster Scots, some are Gaelic Irish, some are whatever. Whoever is watching this, everybody's welcome to watch this and, and participate in this. We are Gentiles. We are those out with the Jewish covenant. So were they. We don't have their names. Don't know where they came from. Therefore we don't know where they went back to. Or what they took back with them. Other than they had encountered. The holiest of holy gods. The one true God made flesh in Jesus. And Jesus is revealed to them. And through them. To the Gentile world. The first Gentiles to engage with Jesus are the Magi in Matthew chapter 2. Have a wonderful epiphany. You can't see, I'm still surrounded by Christmas. That's because I'm recording this on the 4th of January. My mum had still been alive, we'd have been celebrating her 98th birthday today as I record this. So, there we have it. Feast of the Epiphany. Church is going on through this latest phase of uh, COVID mayhem. Should we lose uh, whoever is supposed to be taking your service on a Sunday, we will fall back on uh, members of our team, as long as they're okay. 
they're not okay. Um, our church wardens have been used to you. It falls to church wardens to at least read the service. Okay? We'll respond and we'll react and we'll, we'll make sure there's worship. Um, let's see what happens. Please keep safe. Please look after yourselves and your families. And a very happy new year to you from Anne and me and our whole family circle. Blessed Lord, we thank you that by your Spirit you drew people of great wisdom and learning, people from out with the Hebrew nation, people like us. You drew them from further away or near at hand. You drew them from the east where they'd seen a star. Thank you that you opened their hearts to be guided by you into that place where they bowed down and worshipped. Open our hearts, O Lord, by your Holy Spirit, that we might be drawn to you, to kneel down, to worship you, and to journey on through the rest of our lives. Be we known or unknown, these strangers came and they went again. Always transformed by what they'd seen. Lord, transform our lives. Draw us by your Spirit to worship you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.